Recently in national news headlines, there was a article written comparing the rosary to the AR-15 talking about how the far right tend to weaponize that rosary. Now this article only really tells half the story. Although we do call the rosary a weapon, it's not a weapon for fighting a physical war, but rather a spiritual one on the inside. Welcome back to our 10 Wonders of the Rosary series. This is wonder number two. The Rosary is a spiritual weapon. This is all based on Father Don Calloway's book, The 10 Wonders of the Rosary, which you can find. I'll link in the description below. We're going through all 10 chapters, 10 different videos on each wonder, and we're going to share some great wisdom that has been shared in this book, but also from the saints throughout history and lots, lots more. So stick around, this is great video. We got great feedback on the first one and thanks for being here. Please like, subscribe to our channel, share our videos with friends, check out sheenrosaries.com. In case you did miss the first video, I'll uh, put a little card up there in the corner and tell you that Mary compared the rosary to a spiritual battering ram. Now, yeah, St. Dominic maybe didn't have AR-15s back in the day, but a spiritual battering ram is nothing to take lightly. Now, we've all heard of a WMD or a weapon of mass destruction, but I like to compare the rosary to a weapon of mass formation. Yes, that's because we talked about in that last video that the rosary is a tool for catechesis and evangelical teaching. The rosary is a spiritual weapon because it calls us to meditate on the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, yes, but also calls us to meditate upon a virtue that that mystery is calling us to in order to combat a specific vice or heresy. Now, Father Don Calloway in 10 Wonders of the Rosary actually uses the Luminous Mysteries to demonstrate this point because the Luminous Mysteries were the most recently instituted mysteries and perhaps the heresies or the vices that they are addressing are the most relevant to us today. Maybe a little bit more so than Albigensianism or Arianism back in the day. He actually paints this really great visual picture of St. Pope John Paul II with a sword of light, taking a sword of light or a lightsaber to the darkest heresies of our modern day. Now we'll just do some quick bullet points on why we needed to shed some light in the darkness on each of the five luminous mysteries. The first being the baptism in the Jordan. Well, of course we need to be baptized into the family of God, but a lot of people don't believe that we need to be baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in order to be part of that family of God. The second is the wedding at Cana. And we, you know, today our divorce rates are very, very high. People don't believe they need to get married anymore. Traditional marriage is no longer to be celebrated. The third luminous mystery, the proclamation of the kingdom of God, that there is no heaven to hope for, and perhaps maybe just as bad, there is no hell to worry about. The fourth, the transfiguration. Jesus wasn't really God. He was just a hippie life coach guru who had some really good tips. And of course, fifth, and perhaps worst of all, that the Eucharist is just a symbol. It is not the true presence of the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ. And on top of that, that the sacraments are optional, and we don't actually have to attend them. Now this is true outside of the Luminous Mysteries too. Look at the Annunciation and the Nativity that Mary is Theotokos, the Mother of God. A lot of people don't believe that or haven't in history believed that. The Ascension and the Assumption that Jesus and Mary respectively were raised body and soul to heaven. So how does this relate to the Rosary being a weapon? Well, put most plainly, when we are reflecting on a mystery of the rosary, we are not only looking at a Bible passage and contemplating a Bible passage, but also thinking about a virtue that will help vanquish vice or heresy. As St. Paul says in his letter to the Ephesians, we are to put on the armor of Christ. Carry this rosary around as your sword and your shield throughout the day. Now, it doesn't have to be for just ourselves. It could be intercessory prayer for others who are in need at this time. We can also use the same beads to pray the Divine Mercy Chaplet for the holy souls in purgatory, those most in need. Now, the Fatima prayer does a great job of exemplifying the holy war that wages in our own souls save us from the fires of hell and lead all souls to heaven, especially those in most need of thy mercy. Spiritual warfare is no joke, and this is what our rosary is designed to help us with, praying for the interior help that we need in times of trial and tribulation. You could pray it for yourself or for others. This is what the rosary is so good at. It's our spiritual battering ram, our lightsaber, our spiritual weapon to combat evil, 
in the battle of our interior souls. This is the second wonder of the rosary, that the rosary is a spiritual weapon. And to end very succinctly, St. Jose Maria Escriva wraps up this point very nicely. Today, as in other times, the rosary must be a powerful weapon to enable us to win in our interior struggle and to help all souls. Hey everyone, thanks for sticking to the end of the video. If you want to give us some comments down below on how you think this series is going, or if you have any suggestions, please, I am all ears. Thank you so much for being with us, for listening to our videos, for sharing them with your friends. From us, to you, through Mary.